Welcome to the West End Church of Christ. We are conveniently located at 44th and Broadway. Our address is 4401 West Broadway. Our regular hours of service are 10 a.m. We have our morning Bible study. 11 a.m. We have our morning worship. At 5 p.m. We have our Sunday evening worship. Also, on Wednesdays, we have midweek Bible study service at 7 p.m. The Western Church of Christ also presents a call-in Bible talk show called More Bible Talk. More Bible Talk is presented on WLLV. That is 1240 on the AM dial. More Bible Talk is presented on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 2 to 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The call-in show allows people to call in and their Bible questions are answered in a Bible manner. The Western Church of Christ also has a website. The website is www.westncoc.com. Feel free to use this website as you can retrieve sermons that are presented from the pulpit. We offer it in video format as well as in audio format and streaming data. Our scripture reading for this morning will be 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and the verses 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and the verse is 2. And it reads, Unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all that, are, that is in every place, called upon the name of the Jesus Christ, our Lord, both theirs and ours. I just read 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and the verses 2. So the synopsis cook will be bringing the lesson for this morning. So let us give him our undivided attention. Amen. Amen. This concludes the announcements, and these announcements will be placed on the board in the rest of your area for your further review. Thank you. If you would, let us turn our song book to page 131. Page one three one. Page one thirty one. <laughs> Jesus rose the seraphim, glow within my heart. Give me the thy truth, and only it impart. Everywhere I go, my life may share.
if you would, let us mark our song book to page five, nine, six. Five, nine, six. That will be the song immediately after the lesson. Now, if you would, let us turn our song book to page two, nine, eight. Page two, nine, eight. And if it is convenient for you, please stand. Jesus,
calling or invite you by the word of God or the will of God. Amen. The word is his will and it's, it is here. We are invited to God. Amen. This invitation comes by the way of the word Amen. of God or the will. It is his will that we hear his word. Amen. Oftentimes we think about someone's will that it, 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 it's forced upon us, which is not. God does not will his will upon anyone. If he, if he has the power to make you do what he wants, if he wanted to, Amen. and you wouldn't have any other choice but to do it because that is his power. But that's not the kind of will that he wants. Amen. You know that it speaks about he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He wants everybody to come to repentance. I come to the knowledge of the truth and to obey the truth. But are they? Or will they? No. See? Did he, when Adam and Eve was created in the garden, and he made Adam out of the dust of the earth, and he breathed into him the breath of uh, life, and he became a living soul. Man. And did he, Adam say, well, I don't want to be the soul. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want this. <laughs> did he say that? No, he didn't say that. Calling. The calling. I think there's a movie out about called The Calling. I don't know, I think I've heard of it. Members, saints, are called out by your people. Mm -hmm. Are called out by your people. Separated and set apart to God. Sanctified. You are set apart to God. Sanctified to do a certain thing. Amen. This is called the church. <laughs> and where are these people called out from? They are called out from the world. Amen. The word, you hear it, and it pulls you from the world. So the gospel has called you out from the world by the word of God, not by the word of man. Now, this calling demands baptism of the word of God calls for the, uh, demands baptism. Look in Galatians 3, 26 and 27, which is a very familiar passage of scripture that we are very acquainted with. And it says in Galatians 3, 26, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you have been baptized into Christ, have done what? Put him on. You are baptized into Christ. You have put him on. This is the word of God. This is what it invites you to do. Let us look at 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 13. For, for by one spirit we are all baptized into one body. Whether we be Jew or Gentile, whether we be bond or free, and have been made to drink unto the one spirit. For the body is not many members. And that 13 is, is the one I, I wanted to say for by one spirit. We are baptized into one body, whether Jew or Gentile, or the bond or free, we have been made to drink of that one spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, what does baptism do for us? Baptism washes away our past sin. Man. And it also has effect on our future sins if we commit it. Mm -hmm. uh, and what it does in that situation is we don't have to be baptized again, but we have to repent. Repent according to his word, and the sin 
it's taken away. It is forgiven by God. We don't have to be baptized again. But the baptism puts us into Christ, washing away our sins. Amen. This calling puts us into the body of Christ. And this is a simultaneous situation when you're baptized, when you come out that water, then he puts you in the church. We're added to the church. Let's look at uh, Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 21. Ephesians 1 and verse 21, 23. For above all principalities, are above all rule, and power, and might, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which to come, and have put all things under his feet, and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, and the fullness of him that fulfilleth all in all puts us into Christ. Let's look at Colossians 1 and verse 18. And as I've said, this is nothing new. <laughs> if you study the word of God, then you no doubt have read this. In Colossians 1 and verse 18. <clears throat> and he is the head of the body of the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Jesus is the head of the body. Amen. Amen. Is there anything higher than the head? <laughs> no. The head controls everything, <laughs> even in the physical body itself. The rest of the body doesn't do anything except it gets a signal from the brain, mm. which is the head. And it says, he is the head of the body of the church, who is the beginning of the firstborn from the dead. That is Jesus, the firstborn from the dead. Now, did a lot of people die before Jesus? Yes. Was some of them raised before Jesus? Yes. But Jesus is the only one that died, raised from the dead, and that will never die again. Yeah. Anybody else? <laughs> Before Jesus or after Jesus, if they rose out of the grave, they're going to die again. Mm -hmm. But Jesus, he only died once. Was it his benefit? It was for our. Amen. Man. It was for our benefit. So that we won't have to say, Die the second death. See? We don't have to die the second death. If you live faithful unto death, then you will bypass the second death. But those, those who disobey his will, they will suffer the second death. And that second death is in hell. Amen. Now we talk about the head. And I was, uh, as I was looking at this message, what uh, came to my attention was you know, you hear of these CEOs, uh, these uh, presidents. He is the, that is his company. He is the C CEO of it. But look what uh, Isaiah 40 and verse 12 to 14. Isaiah 40. Verse 13. Or well, we start at verse number 12. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and measured out heaven with the span and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure and weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance? Who has directed the spirit of the Lord? Who has directed the spirit of the Lord? of the Lord or been his counselor or have taught him who has been his counselor or taught him 
with whom took he counsel, and who instructed him, and taught him in the path of judgment, and taught him in the knowledge, and showed him the way of understanding. I see a CEO of a company, he hires people, and some of them people can tell him how to run his business. And it may be beneficial, but this is my soul with Christ and God being the head of the church. No one counseled him. Who taught him the way of understanding and judgment? See, no one. Who's above the head? No one. This calling is divine in nature. This calling is not from God. Um, excuse me. That's an utterly mistake. <laughs> this calling is divine in nature. This calling is not from man. This calling is from God. Amen. But from God, and by the grace of God, lays the foundation to become mature Christian. The foundation from the word of God has been laid that we as Christians can become more mature. Not acting like babes, but become more mature. Amen. Look at 1 Peter 5 and verse 10. First Peter 5 and verse 10. But the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, established, strengthen, and settle you has called us unto eternal glory. It's designed to make us more mature. Now, things that we have said thus far, none of these things come on the map. This is what we have to do. We have been called in. We have been invited in. And when we come in, we are separated. So we have to do something. See? Christ has done what he has done. Now we have to do something. Amen. This is the calling. We're talking about the demand. And the demand is something, not something to be taken lightly. See? Man may demand us to do something. They demanded us to take shots and so forth and so on. The people are protesting and this and that and so forth. But when God demands us to do something, can you protest against it? No. Will you protest against it? No. Have you protested against it? You may have. But let me ask you, who do you think you're hurting? <laughs> who do you think you're hurting? God may be grieved because you're doing that, but you're only hurting yourself. Yeah. The demands of God are to be met. He has never asked us to do anything that we cannot do. Amen. We're supposed to take up his cross and follow him. See? But does the scripture take us? Well, you follow me as long as things are going good. Do you say that? When you take up my cross and follow me, everything is going to be peaches and cream. But you know, I look at, look at Saul, who later became Paul. What kind of life do you think he had prior to him becoming a child of God? Then look what happened to him after he became a child of God. Man. See? But he suffered through it by the grace of God. Man. He went through this. You know, I've heard <laughs> I've heard people say that something happened to him. He said, Well, I guess I'll start going to church now. Oh, I guess I'll start serving God now, as if to say, well, things won't change. 
But if this is your reason to become a Christian, because things are going to change, and when you become a child of God, and then you become persecuted, then what are you going to do? Things seem to be worse now than it was before. So with that attitude, you may go back out to the world. Yeah. You may go back out into the world. But see, you came to Christ in the beginning with the wrong attitude. The Lord is going to make things fine for you and so forth and so forth. That is not the case all the time. The calling requires one to make a physical, mental, careful, and a persistent effort in oneself. This calling requires us physically, mental, a careful, and a persistent effort in oneself. And we talk about uh, 2 Peter 1, verse 4 to 10. And this is talking about the, uh, the uh, seven virtues, as you might say. Add to your faith. Add to your faith. Add to your faith. Without faith, you can do none of these things. Amen. These things are to be added unto your faith, which you already have. It is by faith that you became a child of God. Now Amen. you become a child of God and you have this faith. Now let's add these things to your faith. Add to your faith virtue and the virtue knowledge and the knowledge temperance and the temperance patience and the uh, uh, Patient, godliness, and with the godliness, lovely brother, and to brothers and kindness, charity. Virtue. To have good morals. Knowledge. Investigation. The study and the meditation of his word. Temperance. To have self control. <laughs> I told him how I felt. <laughs> I ain't going to take this, and I'm not going to take that. Self control. Mm. He just made me go off the rail. Temperance, patience, self-control, patience to endure, godliness to be devout. Now you can be devout. He's a devout fisherman. He is a devout golfer. He is a devout football player. But God wants us to be devout in godliness. Amen. Love the brethren. Brotherly kindness. Charity. Love toward all men. Love toward all men. This call, calling provides provision. Without any change, in his position toward us are in his verbal, he's wishing, washing, and so forth. Without any change in his position toward us, if we remain obedient to him. Amen. That's the whole thing in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. If we remain obedient to him or remain faithful to him and I said before are you going to remain faithful to him when things get rough see or do you remain faithful to him when things are going good see we have a tendency to step aside or forget God when things are going good yeah, or when things turn to bad then here we come here we come. The Lord might ask you, where, where were you when you were profitable and so forth? You didn't call upon me. You know, the scripture teaches us, why call ye me Lord, Lord, and what? And do not the things that I say. Mm -hmm. So in other words, that's saying, don't call on me now. <laughs> why are you going to call on me Lord, Lord? And you're not doing the things that I say. It provides us fatherly provision. No verbal if we remain. Look at Romans 8. 8 and verse 31 to 32. 
about the cooking, and I got a whole my wife said, what do you know about cooking on the back burner? <laughs> <laughs> well, we know what a reference that has on the back burner means. Right now, this is less, less sufficient. We need to take care of this right now so it's on the front burner. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that later. And this is sometimes what we do with Christ. We put him on, on this back burner. We may make it back there. Then again, on the other hand, we may not. Man. We always want to be first. See? Always want to be first. This calling demands separation from the world. This calling demands separation from the world. Let's look at John 15, verse 18 and 19. John 15, verse 18 and 19. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hated you. If the world hated you, and Jesus said it hated him first. If you would love the world, the world would love its own. But because you have been separated, and because you are not of the world, but we're in the world, mm -hmm. then the world hates you. Look at First John 15. Uh, don't go that high. <laughs> First John 2. First John two fifteen and verse sixteen. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of life. These things are not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God does what? Abide it for just a little while. Isn't that what it says? It bideth forever. He that doeth the will of God. Does the will of God come upon you automatically? How do you know what the will of God is? By investigation and meditation and the application of his word. Amen. That's what it's all about. It demands separation from the world. Living under God. Living under God not of the world. Romans 14 and verse 8. Romans 14 and the verse is 8. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. Mm -hmm. We are the Lord. Amen. We are the Lord. We are the Lord. What does that mean to you? We are the Lord. We belong to him. Amen. 
We belong to him. Look at 1 Corinthians 6. First Corinthians 6 and the verse is 19. Now, we are the Lord. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? You're not your own. You are the Lord. For ye are bought with a price. That's why you're not your own. That's right. You have been bought with a price. That's right. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You have been bought with a price. That made me think of a situation. You go to the store and you buy a suit. That suit does not no longer belong to that company. That is your suit. It belongs, <clears throat> it belongs to you. <clears throat> we understand this. You go to a dealership and you buy you a new car. I walk out there and scratch it. And you say, why did you scratch my car? That's my car. That's not your car. You understand when something belongs to you. Man. When something belongs to you. You are not your own. Those fellows in the military, they understand that explicitly. <laughs> you are not your own. <laughs> you join the military. All right. They ask you to jump up and you ask them how high on the way up. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we going out on maneuvers? We're going to be gone for a week. Uh uh, wait a minute, Sergeant. I got, I got to go home. I got, I got another job I got to do. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> you are a GI, Amen. what they call government issue. <laughs> you belong to the government. Yeah. You're not your own. We understand this. But when it comes to being God, well, that's, that's a little debatable. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a little debatable. I, I can do what I want to do when I want to. You can't. Because God has given you that ability. You can make the choice. I got one more. <laughs> I got one down here. Do I need to take a break? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just about finished. <laughs> Not unless you want me to take a drink and keep on. <laughs> Living unto God, not unto this world. This world is going to pass away. But those who abide and do the will of God will abide forever. Man. Look at Galatians, the second chapter, verse 20. scripture is given by the inspiration of God. Now the first application of the scripture is to whom they may be talking to and so forth. But the second application applies to us. In a lot of instances. Now in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 is a personal verse as are many others. But we're going to look at this a little differently, so to speak. Not the, we're not going to change the application of it. But what I want you to do when you read it silently, a place where it says, I and me, I want you to put or to say your name. Now, I'm going to read this, and I'm going to put my name. <laughs> In verse in Galatians uh, 2 and verse 20. 
I am the nothing. Crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, the nothings live. Yet not the nothings, but Christ liveth in the nothings, and the life which the nothings now lives in the flesh, the nothings live by faith. So the Son of God, who loved the nothings, gave himself for the nothings. <laughs> I am crucified. Are you crucified with Christ? Do you live for him? The life that you now live is it living for Christ? Look at Romans 14. Romans 14, we're going to go through verses 11 to 12. Romans 14, verses 11 to 12. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, every tongue shall confess of God. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. Now, the only way you can escape that is that if you're not one of the every. <laughs> if you can get out of the every, then you can get out. <laughs> but it says every. That's all. None escape. What kind of me will you have to bow? What kind of tongue will you have? Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. Mm -hmm. If the bowing of the knee of if the bowing of the knee of subjection and the tongue of confession is done then and only then, then it is too late to be saved. Mm -hmm. But every knee is going to bow, every tongue is going to confess. Amen. See. And if that's the only time that you bow your knee in subjection to God, at that time you don't have a choice. If the tongue shall confess, at that time you don't have a choice. Man. But you do have a choice now. Man. You do have a choice now. Man. This bowing of the knee of subjection mm -hmm. is to be done now. This tongue of confession to God is to be done now on this side Amen. of life. Amen. On top of the grass, not <laughs> under the grass. <laughs> on top of the grass, not under the grass. <laughs> the same words that I have spoken shall judge you in the last day. The same words that I have spoken. When you die, you're already judged. Yeah. You've already you already been judged. Mm -hmm. The decision has already been made. That is made by you. You choose to live according to God or you choose not to. So basically saying that in the day of judgment, if you're going to be judged by the word that he's already spoken, then there's not going to be any, 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 any debate at that point. It's time for judgment. It is time for sentencing. See? So the Lord 
It's going to make sure you go where you need to go. Uh. That's all he needs to do. You've already been judged. You're not going to hear anything new. Well, I, I, I did I not know this. What, 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 uh -uh. The same words that I have spoken, they will judge you in the last day. Yeah. These are the words from the Lord. That is his calling. In 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 10, that passage says, for, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, and every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. We're all going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And we're going to be judged by how we live on top of the grass. Mm -hmm. On top of the grass. Living for God, not for the world. That is his calling. That is his invite. Have you ever been invited somewhere and didn't go? And there may be a reason why you didn't go. Maybe you just didn't want to go, but you were invited. But this is an invitation that we should not turn down. Nah. Don't turn it down. See? And get to the invitation of the Lord. At the beginning of this lesson, we talked about baptism. Demands, the calling demands baptism. Now, what good is baptism if there's no healing? What good is baptism if there's no believing? What good is baptism if there's no repenting? What good is baptism if there is no confession? Hearing does not put you in the church. Man. Believing does not put you in the church. Man. Repenting and confession. Baptism is a result of hearing, believing, repent, and confess. Man. That's why you are baptized. This is why the calling is baptism. The calling for baptism because that puts you in the church. All the other ones bring you to that point. Yeah. This is why I want to be baptized. I have my sins washed away. I realize my undone condition because I've heard the word. I believe it. I repented of it. I'm thankful. Confess it, and I want to be baptized for the remission of my sin. And from that point on, live the life of Christ. Amen. I have always mentioned what we need to do is make ourselves a committee of one. You say to yourself that I am going to heaven if everybody else in the world goes to hell. Make yourself a committee of one. Mm -hmm. Now that may sound selfish, but it's not. Simply because if you make yourself a committee of one, what does the word of God requires of you in reference to other people? You do what you can to bring them over. But I'm not going to lose my life in hell because of you. Yeah. Because you won't obey. Or because you do this or you do that. I'm going to make myself a committee of one. I may try to help you or instruct you to go to heaven, but if you don't do this, that is your own way that you have to pull. Yeah. But I'm going to make myself a committee of one. See? So let us do this as we stand and sing the song of invitation, which is God is calling the prodigal. God is calling the prodigal from without delay. Hear, oh, hear him calling, calling now for thee. Though you wander so far from 
His presence come today. Hear His loving voice calling still. Calling now for Thee. Calling now for Thee. Weary prodigal come. Weary prodigal come. Calling now for Thee. Calling now for Thee. Weary prodigal come, patient, loving, and tenderly still the Father pleads. Hear, oh, hear him calling, calling now for thee. Oh, return on the Spirit in mercy intercede. Hear his loving voice calling still. Calling now for thee, calling now for thee, weary prodigal come, weary prodigal come, calling now for thee, calling now for thee, oh weary prodigal come, weary prodigal come, come. House of the Father and to spare. Hear, O oh, hear him calling, calling now for thee. Lo, the table is spread and the feast is waiting there. Hear his loving voice calling still. Calling now for
literature. This is Tamara Maines. Uh, she said, I would like to ask uh, for prayers for Brother Gary Sandusky and his family. Uh, his cancer has come back and is spreading. He's a preacher at Madison Church of Christ. Uh, let us pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for comfort for this family and comfort for Brother Gary. Amen. Yeah. Uh, we know not the day or the hour when anything should come upon us or that That's right. when your son is coming. Yeah. And as this earth is, the things are deteriorating, uh, so are our bodies, Heavenly Father. Yeah. But send comfort to this man, Heavenly Father, yeah. in any, any way that you, we can. Uh, in prayers, let's keep him mm -hmm. and the family. Yeah. Uh, Continue his prayers, Heavenly Father. Uh, uh, today I'd like to say a, a prayer for uh, the sick and shut in, uh, Heavenly Father, that that they be comforted, Heavenly Father, to come back uh, to this house of worship one day. And until then, Heavenly Father, let them stay in the Word and the Word be brought to them. Yeah. Uh, let us pray for our elders, Heavenly Father, who are like the shepherds of the flock here on this earth. That yeah. We should uh, uh, keep them in prayer because they are like guidance to us. Yeah. You know, we can't go where they've been, but they've been before us. Heavenly Father, keep, let us keep them in prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, let us all remember that, you know, this world is temporary and uh, we should be facing our things that are eternal. Yeah. Uh, we have the time to be preparing ourselves for the coming of your son, Jesus. And in between that time, let us do the work that we're supposed to be doing. doing uh, we have been warned of the things um, that are before us on this earth. All these things that are happening are coming to pass, Heavenly Father. Uh, but let us stand firm and not worry. Uh, keep your children not to worry about these things. Amen. But to stand firm in your word, Heavenly Father, that in eternity we shall be in the place uh, uh, of the heavenly realm, Amen. Heavenly Father, where there will be all the glorious things that those who do the work that we are supposed to be doing down here uh, let us continue to reach out to those who are walking in the darkness to show them that wide path that, that uh, is, is very destructive, uh, to lead them back to the narrow path, uh, to let them know that they do have a light that shines before them, and that is your son Jesus, mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, that uh, Prince of Peace, that mighty counselor, you know, mediator between us and you, Heavenly Father. Uh, that we continue to, we should continue to stay in his word, Heavenly Father, continue to keep our prayers, uh, which is the way that we reach unto you, Father, through your son, Jesus, uh, that we, you know, should walk on this earth and walk in the light and not walk in the darkness so that the world will see us and hopefully come into that door where they no longer have to worry about the things that are going on in this earth. Amen. But they should continue to strive and hopefully come and get to this watery grave which watches away their sins. Heavenly Father, and then turn and sin no more. Heavenly Father, uh, let us all keep that in mind that we should be reaching out to those and pray for the people that are homeless uh, and continue to pray for the sick and shut in that they come back to this house of worship. And just remember that this life is just temporary and to base our things that are eternal. In the Son, name Jesus, let us be thankful that we are here for another day of worship, Heavenly Father, to recognize the things that Jesus put down before us through your word, Heavenly yeah. Father. That we should walk out this door and go in peace and to show love to all those around us. In the Son, name Jesus, we thank you. Amen. Yeah. Amen.